So we've used the second dimension to help Bill and Ted move around in the first dimension together. We've used the third dimension to allow Bill, Bob, Susie, and whoever else move around together in the second dimension. And now we're going to use the fourth dimension to allow people in the third dimension to move around. Now here's the cool thing about the third dimension. is It's the dimension that you and I live in and can conceptually understand. But you and I do not live in, nor can we conceptually understand the fourth dimension. But the idea is still the same. If we want to move, or the better technical term for it is translate, if we wish to translate in the third dimension, we have to do the math in the fourth dimension. Yet, physically, it still works the same. We just can't envision it. All right? We can't conceptualize it. We don't really have an understanding. But the math still works. And we can feel good and comfy about that because we can understand the math from the third dimension to the second dimension and from the second dimension to the first. So you and me will walk by faith and just accept the fact that yes, the math works. Yes, there's the fourth dimension. No, we can't conceptualize nor understand what it physically means. But we'll be content to accept that it works and then we can do a translate or a move in position in 3D. All right, that's why I was beating that concept in your head of that extra dimension and using it to move around. That's what we're going to do here. Uh, let me fly around this a little bit. You can see here we have a 3D world, and and these are vectors. They're all coming off this origin here. I didn't draw the crosshairs of the origin um, simply because it was more lines than I wanted to have on the screen. But there we go. There is our origin and these are positions and let's say I don't know this is me this is you this is somebody else you know Billy Bobby Susie Ted we all like to maintain this distance with each other and we want to move in space together but I don't want to have to think of a different transformation than you and we don't want to have to calculate that in 3d but we want to instead use the fourth dimension and hit every single one of us with the exact same transformation so that we move together now here's here's a question for you why do we want to maintain these distances between each other well I'll tell you why because if we do something clever and start connecting the dots between each other in a certain way, a shape will start to come out of this. I don't know if you can tell the shape as I kind of throw these things around, and I don't even know if I'm connecting the dots in the proper way. Probably not. Let me let me uh, connect the dots using lines here and uh, see if you can figure out what why, why you and I like to maintain our positions together, and that's because we make a shape. All right? Yes, we are truly vectors. All right, coming off the origin here, but if you connect the ends of our vectors or our positions like so, then you get this nice kind of cool shape comes out of it. Let me uh, put it, make it more solid. And there you go, there's an arrow. All right, there's an arrow. And we want to do a translate together. Now you can see I have up here, this is the four-dimensional transformation we're going to apply to ourselves. We have our basis vectors. All right, here's one basis vector, another one. Notice it's an orthonormal basis, meaning uh, each of the basis vectors or lengths are one. All right, and they're perpendicular to each other, even though there's four dimensions here. And what does it mean geometrically or physically to be perpendicular in the fourth dimension? We can't understand that nor conceptualize it, but we'll accept it because it's true. We've seen that from 1 to 2D and 2 to 3D and now 3D to 40. Alright, anyway, we want to translate together. Well, which basis cis vector are we going to use to do that? Which one do we need to change? Well, we've seen that we have to use the extra dimension to do the translation. If I grab, I don't know, let me clear this off here. Basis vectors, remember which one's the, the vertical basis vectors. If I grab this one, alright, how's that going to change our vectors here? Alright, let me go like that. And basically, our, our y value of our basis vectors that's increasing the y value. So we can see the transformation there. I can go negative. All right, that increases our y. And, you know, same thing. I can do the same thing with the x. All right, and same thing even with the z. Now we have the z dimension. All right, so that's literally when we're doing transformations. All right, and they call them affine transformations. All right, and you make you think, oh, affine transformations can move shapes. No, it's still moving vectors. Let me bring the shape back in here. Let me increase the y. 
You see how we scale? We're scaling, if I can fly around here a little bit. We're scaling up in the Y, or we can scale in the X, scale in the Z. Whoop, look, it just turned in inside out, so to say. And you can kind of see these vectors still coming out to these vertices out here, or just locations, right? The endpoints of those vectors. But hopefully you get the idea. But now I want to do a translate, and we got the same problem. If we want to translate, well, now you have to have a different different translation than me and so on and so forth, unless we add this fourth dimension. Ah, ha, 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 ha. All right, let me get the arrow back to its original shape. So here we go. Okay, we can't conceptualize nor understand the fourth dimension, but here we go. We're translating, right? Notice the vectors, right? They're staying at the origin there. The, the tail, all, every transformation we do on a vector is with respect to the origin. So that's why it's critical, critical that the vectors, we maintain their position with respect to the origin. And that's literally what we're doing here is just like we saw with the two dimensions and one dimensions, same thing, we're, we're, we, our vectors have to stay at the origin and same thing here with 3D. We're just using this fourth dimension. Now if you talk to the linear algebra math people, and they're right, but this is how they'll explain it. We're using this well, I showed you in that W equals 1 with the 2D pl plane, that 2D plane that existed in the three-dimensional space, and so we were moving around in the W equals 1 plane, but in one dimension we were using moving in the W equals 1 line. Well, now what are we moving in? And we're not moving around in a W equals 1 plane because a plane is some flat thing. Uh, it's it's the W equals 1, here's the technical term they use for it. It's the W equals 1 hyperplane. Ooh. <laughs> we put the word hyper on front of plane. <laughs> but if you Google up hyperplane, you'll see it's 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 a plane in the fourth dimension. Well, I really, really wish they wouldn't have used plane. I think they were just trying to grasp for strings. You know, it's, you know when I think plane, I think of a flat, a flat two-dimensional plane. But, but they said hyperplane, which is... It's kind of like a 3D thing in a four-dimensional, uh, whatever. Right? They use the word hyperplane. But there you go. Let me, um, let me, you know, it's kind of, it kind of helps to see this. It's still the vectors. Look at those vectors. Right? The endpoints. In fact, let's just get rid of our shape altogether. We're translating our vectors. You see, we're maintaining that. You, me, Billy, Bobby, and Sue are all maintaining that, that distance. Or the distances in three dimensions that we like to maintain. Yet we're moving around. Like so, and I don't know, it's kind of hard to fly around this and help you see it, but but that's what we're, all we're doing is we're just maintaining our distance. And again, my program in the background, it's just hitting every single one of these vectors with this four-dimensional transformation. So you can see we're moving like so, or it can go up and down, so to say. Let me bring the shape back in. We're moving up and down. Doing the translate, doing the translate. There you go. Homogeneous coordinates affine transformations. I hope that makes sense. Now there's one little thing with homogeneous coordinates that is more a linear algebra thing than a game thing, but I'm going to talk about that in the next video. It's kind of important, but not really. Uh, I don't know. When we get to computer graphics, maybe it's important, but just an interesting thought, if you would, with homogeneous coordinates.